What do you think is the best story that you have ever read or watched and why? I am excited to hear your responses to my questions. Hi guys! Welcome back to my class. This is Teacher Adam and here is your weekly dose of English lessons. As promised, today we are going to have a specific discussion of one of the elements of a story, which is the plot. The plot shows how the events in a story unfold, and just like what I mentioned in a previous video, through wit, other important elements of the story are revealed. That's the reason why I made a video specifically for it. So join me today as we learn the different elements of a plot. For us to remember the elements of a plot easily, we may use this figure, which looks like a roof of a house. The first element of a plot is called exposition. From the term expose, it reveals some of the important elements of the story, such as the setting, which introduces where and when the story took place, and the characters. Just a little reminder, the setting revealed in the exposition part may not always be definite or specific. You may have already heard the phrase, once upon a time or in a far, far away land, right? Also, not all characters appear at the start of the story, but at least the major ones are introduced. In general, exposition is the beginning of the story. Remember conflict as an element of a story? It is found in the next element of a plot, and that is rising action. Rising action builds up the plot by showing the conflicts, which are known as the challenges faced by the characters or the problems that must be solved in the story. There are four types of conflicts that may be observed in a story. The first one is called man versus man. It shows two or more characters having opposing desires or interests. For example, this scene in Gladiator shows how the main character, Maximus, battles for his life after he got betrayed by the son of the emperor who reduced him to slavery that caused him to be a gladiator. The second one is man versus nature. In this type of conflict, a character is tormented by natural forces such as storms or animals. Life of Pi is a good example. Not just because he had to endure surviving a boat ride with a tiger, but because he had to survive storms while he was on the great ocean. The third one is man versus society. In this type of conflict, the character stands at odds with societal norms and realizes the necessity to work against these norms. Who would forget about Katniss Everdeen? Being the Mockingjay or the symbol of revolution started a call to stop the Hunger Games, which cost the lives of many young tributes. The fourth and last type is man versus himself. 
this conflict develops from a protagonist's inner struggles and may depend on a character trying to decide between good and evil or overcome self-doubts. It can also be a disability, a psychological issue, or anything from within the character. Two famous characters who fit as examples are Quasimodo of Hunchback of Notre Dame and Elsa of Frozen. And for sure, you know why. Now we've reached the topmost part of our roof-like figure, and this reminds us of Climax. Climax is dubbed as the most exciting part of the story. It is the peak of the plot where emotions and tension are heightened. In simpler terms, it may be the time when the hero saves the princess, discovers the buried treasure, or slays the dragon, if you know what I'm saying. This may also be considered the most remarkable part of the story. Climax leads to the fourth element of the plot, which is the Noma. It is derived from the French word denou, which means to untie. Denoma is a literary device that can reveal how the issues of a complicated plot are solved. Denoma also reveals the theme and lessons of the story. But what is good about the Noma is, there are times when the audience expects that the story is already ending when a plot twist suddenly arises. In this fight scene in the novel turned movie Breaking Dawn, the story seemed to be ending with a battle between the main characters and the Volturi, with, of course, Edward and Bella killing the chief of the villains. Surprisingly, it turned out to be just a vision of one of the characters named Alice. And of course, all plots come to an end. This is where the final part comes in, the resolution. Resolution is what happens to the characters after the conflict or problem is resolved. In literature, there are two classifications of how a plot ends. The first one is happy. It happens when all the main characters live, but when a character playing a lead role dies, it is considered tragic. This classification originates from the dramas performed back in the classical Greek and Roman days. In the original version of the classic tale, The Little Mermaid by Hans Christian Andersen, there wasn't really a happy ending, as the mermaid didn't really marry the man she loves. The prince married another woman whom he thought saved him from drowning. The only way the mermaid can live is if she kills the prince, so in the deep ocean, she just vanished like sea foam. There you have the five elements of a plot. It's now time for us to check how well you understood our lesson for today. Here is your homework number 18. Remember the short film entitled The Present Official? Watch it again and identify the elements of its plot by answering the following questions. In a sentence or two, write the responses on your notebook. Instructions on how you will submit your output will be available on Schoology as a homework reminder.
It's now time for reflection. Allow me to share a Bible verse with you before this discussion ends. Our verse is from Mark 16:15. He said to them, Go into all the world and preach the gospel to all creation. In my previous video, I expressed how I believe that the message of John 3:16 which is about how God gifted man salvation is the best story ever written or told. And since this is the best story, we must never keep it just to ourselves. Our Bible verse for today gives us the Great Commission. It is what God wants us to do, to share the message of salvation to others. While we are so bold in airing our opinions, posting about how we feel, what we wear, what we eat, where we go, and more on social media, why don't we use it as a platform to preach God's Word too? Who knows, a virtual friend may get to know Jesus because of this. So take advantage of every opportunity to share Jesus to others. Praise be to God! That is all for today's video. Thanks for watching. For questions or clarifications, take note of them for the meantime, and we will talk about them in our live class, or you may also book a consultation schedule with me. I sincerely hope that you learned something today. See you on my next video. Stay safe and God bless.